Hello again. In this video, we're going to take a look at a real-world performance bug. The bug in question is present on Google Docs, so it's what I imagine to be a fairly high-traffic website, and hopefully that makes for a more interesting use case. This bug is actually focused around the concept of painting in a browser rendering context, and if that's new to you, do check out an introduction to browser rendering. It's a video I made a few years back, but don't let that fool you. It's still very relevant, in my opinion. If you kind of skim through it, you'll see these references to layout and painting. Painting is what we're going to be focused on. But that being said, you don't need to understand painting a great deal to understand what's happening. here. So long story short, when the browser needs to get pixels to the page, it paints it. In addition to that, when a browser needs to change the state of you know one UI element to another, it also needs to paint that change. To give you an example, here you can see we've got lots of white space over here and I click this font drop down, and suddenly that white space is kind of overlaid with this font selection. But here's where it gets interesting. In an ideal world, the browser only paints what's necessary. So in other words, it only paints this, this kind of long rectangle. What wouldn't be good is if the whole page painted or three quarters of the page painted, for example. But the truth is that's exactly what happens sometimes. So DevTools does have some built-in tools to recognize this. I'm gonna type in paint, show paint flashing rectangles, and if we do that exact same movement again, so hover, click, there we go. You can see the act of clicking on that kind of triggered this paint rectangle to appear. And the idea is that paint rectangle shows you exactly what's changed. Um, I'm gonna turn that off for a second because I want you to have a think about something. If I hover over this open comment history tooltip, so in other words, I hover over the button and then the tooltip appears. My question to you is what area do you expect to be painted? Have a think about that for a few seconds, and let's actually try that out. Command Shift P, type in paint, and select show paint flashing rectangles. Do the exact same movement. There we go. And you can see, to me at least, that's fairly intuitive, and I'm sure to most of you. So we hover over, and all that actually needs painting is indeed the tooltip itself, but also the button, the icon in question, because it looks like it's changing to a very light shade of gray. So far, so good. Makes sense. And again, you select the, um, the font menu, it's that exact piece of rectangular section which needs painting. Okay, enough background, let's look at the bug itself. If I hover over this bold icon, check that out. You see the tooltip does appear, but why is the painted area so large? Now the actual reasons for the large painted area I haven't investigated just yet, but we are gonna take a look at a potential fix for this and kind of look at the workflow as to how we'd apply the potential fix and then verify that it has been fixed indeed. Okay, so again, very large paint rectangle. Doesn't really make sense considering the tooltip is so tiny. Let's get investigating. All right, so with the tooltip there, I'm gonna right click and select inspect. All right, I think it's disappearing. So let me try that again because the tooltip disappears as I sort of move the mouse. And um, but anyway, here it is. So we've got JFK dash tooltip and it's got a left and top with some sort of pixel value that I assume is set through JavaScript. And let me just get that appearing for you so you can see exactly what it looks like, visibility visible. There we go. So you can see the tooltip is just chilling there in the top left corner and JavaScript is probably you know moving it to the appropriate place as and when it's needed. All right, I'll get rid of these. There is a whole world out there investigating the performance of you know left and top versus transform, translates, etc. We're not gonna go too much into the theory, but rather we'll apply a little interesting piece of CSS known as will change. You might've heard of this before. Go and read about it on the Mozilla Developer Network if you're interested. Will change is pretty much a hint that you give to the browser, you the developer, and you type in you know something like let's say left, okay. And what this does is is it tells the browser, hey, I intend to change the left property. Um, it may change, it may not, but that's my intention. And in this case, it's left and top that is changing. So in fact, let me say left comma top, so you can separate those properties by a comma. And just like that. What we're doing here is we're hinting to the browser that we intend on changing the left and top properties. Okay, as you can see here, that's how the tooltip is being positioned. And unofficially, what the browser will most likely do is it will do what's called layer promotion. So it will promote the tooltip onto its own layer. And the reason this is particularly useful for something like a tooltip is because a tooltip doesn't affect the geometry of the rest of the page. Okay, so enough talking, let's just verify if what we did has made a difference. Okay, cool. Um, in fact, let me go to sources panel just so we don't see as many changes in the elements panel. Nice, so that change does seem to have worked. Of course, if I was making this change for real, I would test that a lot more, You know, maybe test the mobile viewport, test other browsers and so on. But in this case, it looks 
you know, fairly decent. And also if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that DevTools has a layers panel. So let me open up the layers panel. Um, and it turns out it does exactly that. It shows you what the layers on your page are. First of all, I'm going to hide the paint rectangles. That's just getting in the way. And we want to see if that tooltip has indeed been promoted onto its own layer. So back to elements, we'll find that tooltip and we'll make it appear. So opacity one and visibility visible. Cool. And then back to the layers panel. And there we go. There's that tooltip. And if I select it, just a single click on that layer, you see it's telling me indeed it's a layer. And the reason it's been composited is because it has a will change compositing hint other than transform and opacity. Nice. If this is something you want to kind of experiment with a little more, what I would do is open up your favorite website, command shift P, choose show paint flashing rectangles, and literally just go around hovering over stuff, clicking on them and verifying that the paint rectangle size that you expect is indeed what shows up in this kind of green outline here. If it's a lot larger, Again, sometimes it will happen and sometimes it's unavoidable. If it is a lot larger, however, it's something that you can investigate. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.